Hello everybody, I am Mike DeZorch, and today I'm reacting to another Inside Star Citizen video. Today is... Uh, no. Basically, what this video is about is they were fixing Gravlev vehicles. Hopefully, hopefully they fix the Gravlev landing gear on the Nomad too. But this is for this has been a long time in coming that they've needed to do this for Gravlev bikes, the Drake Dragonfly and the Knox are a couple of vehicles that really needed to be fixed. Uh, I've actually flown uh, them before. I've rented them before at past uh, Interspace Expos. I don't actually own one, but I'd like to get one. And now that they actually fixed them, because the, the problem is, is when you start it up, when you're in the back of the ship and you start it up, it lifts way up off the ground and it slams you into the ceiling of the, of the bay you're in. And so you can't put it on a small ship, so you get stuck. Like we got stuck in a freelancer max, which that shouldn't happen, but it did. So uh, this uh, should improve things significantly. All right, let's get to it. There's a type of vehicle in Star Citizen which is very unique and has the potential to really be a special, fast, visceral experience that just you can't get with a lot of other vehicles. And so the Gravlev experience is going to really go a step up with this. Oh, definitely. I mean, this, this has like speeder bike vibes here going through the going through the woods this is in the tundra uh, region of microtech with the uh the evergreen trees because microtech is a failed microtech was a world where they were terraforming it and something went wrong so the planet is mostly frozen and there's frozen tundra on the planet and there's pine trees everywhere in in the areas that aren't bitterly cold i mean it's still cold but it's um, at least green plants can actually survive in those regions. And this this definitely has speeding through the forest of Endor sort of vibe. And that would be awesome. Especially if these handle better now with these changes. The current state of Gravlev is a little rough. We have such a wide variety of oh, yeah, uh, it is. planets that the existing Gravelove just doesn't cope particularly well in a lot of the common situations you might find on planets. And the so great dragon, we have the it getting great stuck dragon in geometry, like right there can actually flung be used into in space, space, glitching into things, and having all sorts of hilarious physics bugs that may be funny, but they don't really make the experience very fun or enjoyable. So this quarter, we finally got time to really dive into uh, Gravlev and really figure out what it's going to take to make it what we really want it to be. One of the first things we focused on with Gravlev is this new specialized suspension system, which is a little bit like a car, but it's doubly disconnected from hmm. the bike to make it really feel like it's hovering. That's cool. The largest benefit we've gotten from this new suspension system is we can orient and move the bike somewhat independently of the suspension in ways that we were never able to do before with the old Gravlev. Oh, God. I have got the to get step, me one now. Uh, is to use this new suspension system to implement a whole host of improvements to the stability of the, the bikes. So they're not going to bottom out, they're not going to bump into the ground, they're not going to crash off rocks and lose control, they're not going to go flying off into space. Good. Which really makes the whole experience much smoother much less glitchy, much more reliable. So once we've got this super stable uh, suspension implemented, um, we can implement some improvements to the actual control of the bike. So the turn friction for making maneuvers is improved. Oh, thank you. And we they can also just... implement things like... Turning in these things is just way too slippery. I mean, it's like you're on ice. I mean, I know you're, 
hovering, your anti-grav, but it's like it had no thrusters for like turning and stopping. It's, it's like you're you're sliding everywhere, and it not doing that as much anymore is good because it made these things almost impossible to control. Better height control, and that will have differences in the Thank handling you. of the bike that you can feel a lot more than you used to be able to. And they've implemented is a, a thing called anti-fall, which effectively kicks in to arrest the bike's fall when you fall from a great height. So if you do big jumps off dunes on Daymar, the bike doesn't crash into the ground now. When you get Good. back to the ground, How it time. much more aggressively stops itself and prevents itself from crashing. Last but certainly not least, we have this uh, amazing feature where if you power off the bike or you get off the bike, the suspension will intelligently sort of relax the bike down. That's not doing that. Similarly, it not doing that is what caused the Drake Dragonfly that we used to get stuck in a Freelancer Max. That's what caused it to get stuck. We couldn't get back on it to get it out. We just had to abandon the free... Actually, we had to just blow it up. When you get on the bike, it will softly ramp in the suspension so the bike will sort of softly lift up and you're ready to go on your adventure. Cool. I'm hoping that the combination of all of these new features and improvements... These are good to really have now. ...make this a lot better um, and... It's been a personal hope of mine for quite some time that I've been able to do this rework because Gravlev just has such potential for such amazing moments. And I know when it's used, for example, in the Daymar Rally, it's just mm -hmm. it's it's just such a cool sci-fi vehicle. And it's been my it's been my wish for, for quite some time that we can make that that experience, you know, as good as it can get. These new Gravlev improvements coming online in Alpha 316 aim to finally fulfill the unique promise inherent in vehicles like the Dragonfly, yes. the Knox, the X1, and the upcoming... Yep, that... uh, coming up next, hmm. let's look at the return of the Jumptown Wars, also ah. coming in Alpha 360. Okay. When Jumptown 2 activates, there are now... The original... This is, they're, they're actually bringing this back, they're actually doing this artificially, but before Jumptown was emergent gameplay, uh, where it just happens because of the conditions. Uh, basically, what it was is, is it was a place where you could get drugs. You could pick up, this, pick up these boxes of drugs and go sell them. And what happened is, is people found out and the whole place became a war zone. And it became a really good place to get stuff to make money. And people loved it. Because you go there, you have to fight your way in. And uh, some people were trying to stop you from getting in and everything. And it was just awesome. And then there were some changes made. And it stopped. Um, it stopped working. Stopped being a good viable way making money if you were playing as a criminal. This they're working on bringing it back uh, and actually building some gameplay for it. And that was, that was that sort of thing, that kind of emergent gameplay that the original Jumptown was, is the kind of thing that this game is designed for. Where CIG didn't design that whole scenario to happen. That whole situation with uh, people going there to get going there to get the drugs and the drugs selling really well. They didn't design it specifically to make this a location that players would go to and fight over. It just happened because of the mechanics in the game and because of the the, the price that the drugs sold for and everything. And it was not something that they specifically designed to make happen that's what that is what emergent gameplay is it is complex situations born out of simple mechanics and so they're bringing that back 
not adding in a bunch of complex mechanics, but setting up the same conditions that allowed for Jump Town to be what it was. And there's examples of stuff like this all over the game. That's what Star Citizen is designed to do, is be um, a game where gameplay is something that just happens because of the interaction between people. Now, it's what emergent gameplay is. All right, let's, let's continue. Now, three drug labs where this event can happen. Jump Town, Raven's Roost. Cool. And Paradise Cove to create a much more engaging. I've been to one universe. of these for a drop-off mission. What is Jump Town 2.0? It's the event that we're putting Jump out around. that is the officialization of a community uh, event that happened uh, a few years ago, where mm -hmm. due to a bug, um, a location ah, became bug. immensely profitable. That was also very conducive to uh, player versus player uh, combat. We are now taking that um, concept and turning it into a much more developed mission that we are officially supporting. Okay, so they are adding some more missions. When Jumptown 2 activates, a mission will be distributed out to players. This mission comes in two varieties. One is uh, the criminal side and one is the lawful side. If you are actively having a crime stat, you will see a notification popping up letting you know that Rudo has contacted you. He wants to sell you some information on a really lucrative drug opportunity. Hmm. The big thing here is that when you go and collect these for Rudo, you will take those drugs and sell them at Grimhex. For the legal side of things, when you are confiscating that contraband, you are going to be taking them back to the lower earth orbit station for that security company and selling it to their admin office. Okay. Maze. Hmm. We have actually put in some new tech that makes it so that while you are contracted for that security company, any police that pull you over will see that you have this contraband, but also that you have a temporary license for carrying it because you have been deputized. And so they will tell you to just go on your way. Attention. Cool. Please come to an immediate halt and hold for your vessel to be scanned. There are some box missions that have you go to a location where you were warned you are trespassing. And you get a crime stat for... Actually, not a crime stat, but you get a fine for going there. But you're going there to pick up a box for deliveries. They need to do that for this. To where you have... Uh, permission to go to those places because uh, a lot of them are on Aberdeen around Hurston because Aberdeen is the location of the Klesher prison and a lot of locations there are uh, restricted and you take a mission to go pick up a box at a location that is restricted you're supposed to go there on a mission to pick up something Yet you get a crime stat for doing it. Not a crime stat, but a, a fine for doing it. It's like, okay, you want me to go there and do this, but you want to fine me for going there. That needs to be fixed. And it's good that they're doing this. Because ordinarily, the cops would start shooting at you. All right. Everything checks out. Feel free to go. Another is that we added the ability for the shops where you can sell these things to be modified during it so that uh, you won't be running out of inventory anytime soon during a uh, fire sale like this. The general flow of the mission is as follows. You will see a notification popping up in informing you that you have a mission available. When you accept that mission, you will receive two markers. One marker will be pointing you to a location where you can sell the drugs. The other marker will be pointing you to a drug lab where those drugs are being automatically produced every X amount of seconds. Hmm. It's worth noting that you don't need to have a mission in order to uh, interface with this event. It's just that these markers are the benefit of accepting the mission. 
during that time, everyone else on the server is also aware of this high value <laughs> location. And it's yep. very likely that they will be landing and contesting you doing so. Mm -hmm. Since the original Jump Town, there have, of course, been a bunch of changes to the Persistent Universe sandbox. We have tanks, we have ballistas, we have ground vehicles galore. We also have a whole bunch more dropships. Oh, this place is going to be a war zone. To assault these drug labs. And as a result of that, we wanted to do a bit of an update to the gameplay spaces that they provided. Jump Town 2 is set to release with 3.16.0. We're going to be running it on a schedule during winter break. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you all get to kill each other and steal a whole bunch of drugs during this. Uh, <laughs> and we hope that you have a great time with this little callback to a great moment in Star Citizen history. Cool. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that there's a new and exciting second life for our Gravlev vehicles on the way. That Jump Town <laughs> will be joined by Raven's Roost and Paradise Cove for lucrative business opportunities and exciting new PVP encounters alike. And that if you want to learn more about the upcoming, you should follow along with this year's <clears throat> exciting Luminalia festivities. Yes, it's an exciting time for celebration and giving thanks. And we're going to do both with our community beginning today. Check out the robertspaceindustries.com website for more details. I'm Jared Huckabee. This is Inside Star Citizen. I said that backwards. We'll see you all next week. All righty then. So, here's the thing. Uh, the bikes getting fixed, the grav lev getting fixed, definitely a big plus. Uh, a couple other things that are being fixed in 316. 316 is not going to be a huge update. It's going to be more of a smaller incremental one. It's not going to be as groundbreaking as 3.15 and 3.15.1 was. Uh, 3.16 is you know, the bikes. Uh, a few other things have been fixed, like um, Tigra, when we last played, was killed by being thrown by steps coming out of a hab. Uh, for some reason, it, he got out on the steps and it literally tossed him to the ground and killed him. Well, that's been fixed. Uh, a few other, few other bugs have been fixed. Like when you loot a dead body on your ship, the game crashes. That sort of thing been corrected. Small bug fixes, and then uh, this new event, this thing that happened because of a bug. That was emergent gameplay. That was a huge event in the community, and everybody just had lots of fun with it. Being brought back as actual legitimate gameplay with missions for people playing as criminals and people playing as bounty hunters and, and enforcers of the law is the stuff that people have been wanting uh, for this game. It's stuff that people have been wanting for. Elite Dangerous, and they're not really getting. So, this was an interesting update. Not the biggest one. A 316 is not going to be a very big uh, update to the game, but it's, we still have some time because this is coming. This is 316 is the last update of the year. And then next year, we're getting stuff like the cargo refactor and salvage and, and things like that. Stuff is there's definitely progress being made to the game. We're getting more implementations of, of the um, server meshing. Some of the server meshing is working now. And it has drastically altered everything. Uh, you don't lose your cargo. If you leave uh, your cargo on your ship and you stow it at a uh, starport or space station. So if you store your ship, you don't lose your cargo. If you get booted off by a crash, you still keep your stuff. You don't lose it. And also, we've played for like six to eight hours at a time. And without the server crashing, without a 30k. And that's never happened before. And so it's it's like super stable. The servers are super stable now. 
and I haven't had a client crash in a long time. There's still frame rate issues, and they've introduced recently easy anti-cheat because people were using aimbots and stuff. They wanted to do that because they've got the stuff, this PvP stuff coming up, and they don't want people cheating in that, using aimbots and, and things to, to cheat because you got the whole uh, thing with um, the death of the spaceman, the whole way the game now handles death. They didn't want people cheating. Anyway, this was this week's Inside Star Citizen. I don't know what they're going to do for next week. Um, maybe if they have time, they may add more to 316. There may be more to it than simply the, the rework of the Grevlev and the introduction of um, Jump Town 2. We may see that, but uh, we'll have to wait until next week. So I have been Mike the Zorch. This has been my reaction to the latest Inside Star Citizen. I'll see you next time.